Okay, people, I'm back. Tales from the Pen, part 13. Oof, hard. Thank you to all my supporters, as I say all the time. Thank you for everybody who's supporting me, everybody who's watching, you know, everybody who, who's, 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 who's subscribed to my channel. It's like 300 now. Nice. I appreciate it. I've only been doing this a couple months. If you're new to the channel, please go down and hit subscribe and the notification button. So every time I do a video, you will get notified that I did one. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Fred. I'm from Queens. And I talk about my experiences in the penitentiary and on Rikers Island. For those who are new, I got, a, I got arrested for the first time at 14. I was arrested again at 15. I got arrested again at 16. By 17, I was in prison for murder. Felony murder. So I know a little bit about of what I speak upon, okay? Because I see, and what we do here also, is nothing, 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 nothing glorifying jail at all. Because I see a lot of these cats that's, that's home now, that just came home recently, did 20 years and stuff like that. They jumped on these platforms, and a lot of these guys are out there, and they're glorifying their experiences, man. They're talking about all the people they stabbed, all the people they cut. Who the hell is that helping? That's not helping anybody. That's not what Fred is about. I don't want no part of that. You know what I mean? I don't want no part of nothing that's not going to help the next generation. <clears throat> I'm doing this so, so people, you know, don't follow my footsteps. There's nothing cool about the shit I had to do, did, or whatever. There's nothing cool about that shit. There's nothing cool about jail. A lot of these dudes is home and they glorifying that shit. Hate it. They're on these platforms talking crazy. Instead of talking to the youth and letting them know what's really going on, man. What's really happening, man. The mental warfare, the, the emotional warfare, even just the, you know, the wars maybe they've seen. That's not what I'm about. That's not ever what I'll be about. I'm all about, you know, I'm all, let me show you guys my, the back of my shirt. I don't know if you guys can see it. I do it for the kids. I don't know if you guys can see that. I do this for the kids. You know, I do this for the people who want to know about prison and stuff like that. But more or less, I do this strictly for the kids so they understand shit is not a game. I don't know if you heard a little bit about last week, but last week they decided that the bill makers decided they're going to shut down Rikers Island. Right now, there's about 7,000 inmates on Rikers Island. When I was there, the average was 21 to 22,000. So it was a lot more packed, a lot more testosterone running around. So they decided to close. They're going to be closing Rikers Island and they're going to be, you know, having jails in, in every borough. And guess what, taxpayers? Guess what? It's going to cost you $8 billion with a B. $8 billion to do this. So, you wanted it, you got it, right? You know, I'm, 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 I don't really, you know, understand the, the ramifications of it yet. You know what I mean? In the next coming weeks, I put something together to understand, like what's what's the real plan and what they're really trying to do. But eight billion dollars—that's crazy. They could put that eight billion dollars towards education. They could put $8 billion towards the school system. How about that? So these kids don't grow up into, you know, living a criminal lifestyle, man. I believe it all starts with the kids. You know, education fuels the mind. That's a fact. So I believe that if you invest that money into the kids, we would have a lot less going to prison when they're 16, 17, 18. As I did. That's how I feel. But they'd rather build prisons. For who? Not for me. For the kids. They're building it for the future. I just think that that money could be, you know, allotted to something that's, that's, that's more positive. As opposed to taking taxpayers' money and building bigger and more jails. 
It's crazy. Let's educate these kids. Some of these classrooms got 30, 40, 50 kids, 40 kids in there. One teacher. How are kids supposed to really learn, man? The education system is lacking so much. And here we are building prisons and jails. And that's their focus. That shit makes no sense to me. Let me know if you guys agree with that. It makes no sense to me. But I'm glad they're closing Rikers Island a certain way. You know, one part of me. Because Rikers Island, I t you know, I hated that shit. Rikers Island was horrible, man. Rikers Island is where I have some of my worst memories, man. You know, from inmates to police. I mean, the police was horrible on Rikers Island, man. And it was crazy. You'd think they'd be a little bit more because they're from the inner city or whatever. Nah, man. Fucking horrible. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they're closing Rikers Island. Let's see what the whole plan is. I'm just not glad that they're allocating that money that could be used for the kids. That's my problem with this whole shit, man. But we'll have more on that in the you know, next few videos when I formulate what they're really trying to do. So today we're going to do a little couple couple questions, a couple, couple little Q&As. I love the Q&As, people. Please, keep them coming. Keep them coming to my DMs. I love it. Or, you know, my, my, my Instagram is Pale Rider. P-A-L-E-R-Y-D-E-R-11367. Flushing Queen zip code. So that's Pale Rider 11367. As soon as you put in Pale Rider in the one, I'm going to pop up. Please. You know, send, keep sending them DMs. I love them. And my email, in case you want to reach me here, is Pentails. <clears throat> P-E-N-T-A-L-E-S 5279. Those are the last four numbers of my ID number that they branded me as a cow. Because I tell you, once you go upstate, you are no longer a name. You become a number. And the last four digits of my identification code that I would go to, to the grave with was 5279. Oh, yeah. So, it's pentails5279 at gmail.com. Again, please keep the questions coming. I love them. I love these kind of questions all over the place. Let's see what we got here. We got Brandon from Massachusetts. He wants to know how much religion plays a factor in jail. Now, religion plays a big factor in jail. Okay? Religion plays a big factor in jail because you got a lot of dudes that hide behind that shit, to tell you the truth. I mean, if the few people who find their religion, you know, there may be a few, you know what I mean? But a lot of dudes, especially like with the Catholic Church, a lot of those dudes, man, a lot of those dudes who, you know, became holy rollers and are in church a few times a week and on Sundays and carrying their Bible around the jail, usually they got something to hide, to tell you the truth. Not all of them. I'm saying, but it's been my experience, at least 80% 80, 80 of them have something to hide. Whether it be, you know, child molestation charges, whether it be rape charges, something's in their past that they're playing and hiding and staying in the church every day. You know, this has just become my experience. You know, the church used to be a place and also where a lot of people meet. You know what I mean? One side of the jail and the other side of the jail, they all meet in church Sundays and, you know, so, you know, I, I don't know. I, I remember in one jail, I was in this medium security jail. And the, 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 like the head chaplain for the inmates. I remember one day, man, you know, I know he looked a little suspect. I could tell he was a little suspect anyway. So one day, he was behind us. He was, you know, dudes ran up on him. And he was behind the staircase and he was on his knees with the dude in front of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had the pipe in his mouth. Oh, yeah. And when dudes caught him, like, <gasps> Preacher, what, what, what you do? He was calling him Preacher. Preacher, what you doing? He looked up, he started to cry, and he said, the devil made me do it. What the? No, motherfucker, the devil didn't make you do it. He was fucking like that the whole time, man. The devil ain't make you do shit, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's how I feel about some of them. And I feel like a lot of dudes, not all dudes, let's not get this wrong. I don't, you know, I don't want dudes coming at me sideways and shit. But a lot of dudes, especially turn Muslim in prison. A lot of dudes, you know, you see them one day and then the next day they got their kufi on, man. 
you know, they bump their head now, 100%. You know, and I found, a, you know, a lot of those dudes was just doing it for protection. Because the Muslim community is very strong in the penitentiary. Like, you stab or do something to a Muslim dude, you know, you're going to have beef with a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? That's the fact. So a lot of dudes, a lot of, you know, there's certain gangs and shit like that. But really, in, in, you know, in that aspect of it, the Muslims are probably one of the strongest. If not the strongest in the penitentiary. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And in my day, you know, like I said, when I first started to go to prison, it wasn't none of this real gang shit. It was couples here and there, but nothing crazy. It's no bloods, no crips. That's a fact. That shit ain't coming until a little bit later. But when I first started to go to penitentiary, it was more boroughs. Brooklyn, Queens, you know, Brooklyn, you know, Brooklyn was a whole different ball game. The, you know, them dudes was starting problems with everybody. And that's how it was. You mess with a dude from Brooklyn, Brooklyn dudes came at you. Same thing. So with Brooklyn, Queens, you know, all the boroughs, Bronx, that's how it was. And it was five percenters. The five percenters were strong. The guards, you know what I'm saying? The guard bodies were strong. That's a fact. And the Muslims. The Muslims always been strong. You know, throughout my whole time. The other things that came along later and got strong came across later and got strong. But the Muslim community always been deep, man. You know what I'm saying? Like they, you know, and they held their, they, you know, they held it down. But a lot of dudes, like I said, man. You know what I'm saying? I seen it for a fact, man. I seen dudes. You know what I'm saying? That was Ock in there, man. I swear to God. You know, I called them coming out the coochie freak those spot. You know, eating pork chops. Fact. You know what I'm saying? But I'm sure if they go back to Rikers Island or go back to jail, they're going to put their kufi back on and, you know, hide up under that, man. So a lot of them dudes, I don't believe, you know, I didn't believe was real about it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them dudes was just there for protection, man. You know, a lot of dudes found their, they found their God and all that. I ain't going to say that. But there was a lot of hiding going on, you know, with the religions. That's a fact. So, you know, shout out to Brandon, Massachusetts. I see you, boy. Let's see, we got Tony from Queens. He wanted to know about the Asian gangs. Well, here's the thing. You know, it's coming from Queens, you know, I grew up, you know what I mean? I, you know, I remember the, you know, the ghost shadows, the flying dragons, I remember those type dudes. But when I went to the penitentiary, they was all together. There was no more, a, you know, I'm sure that when they came back out, they got back with whoever they was with. But in the penitentiary, all the Asians stuck together. Cause you gotta realize here, you gotta realize this, right? That, Especially like, uh, especially like on, the, on Rikers Island. Rikers Island, you know, it consists of 55% black, 35% Latino. Okay, so that leaves, you know, another maybe 10%, right? 10% of other. So the other community, the whites, the Asians, you know, there wasn't that many of them. You know what I'm saying? You know, there was not that many, especially on Rikers Island. When you go up north, it's a little bit more, but on Rikers Island, definitely. That was that was the that was the breakdown of it. You know what I mean? So all the Asians, especially, you know, they stuck together on Rikers Island. I seen the Asian. I mean, I seen them go out one time with the turtles, Ninja Turtles. You know, for those who don't know what the Ninja Turtles are, as I've explained in other videos, and you haven't watched them, the Ninja Turtles are serious. The Ninja Turtles are the biggest, baddest police in the jail. They come on. They put their big gear on, their, you know, their batons. Some of them have uh, the shields with the shock, and they cover their faces and everything, and technically you don't know who they are, but, you know, we, we all know who they were. And when there's a riot or something going down, they come through and they shut the fucking shit down. They shut shit down, 100%. You know what I'm saying? I remember one time... You know, on Rikers Island, man, these, I mean, the, the Asians was going at it with the turtles for like a half hour, and that shit is like unheard of. I mean, these kids had sticks, these kids had mop ringers, and you know, like fucking nunchucks. I'm, I'm serious, man. And they went at it with these little dudes. It was like 10, 10 little dudes, man. And they went at it with the turtles for forever, man. They weren't giving up. I mean, these, these kids, these kids went out. You know what I'm saying? You know, and up north too. They always stuck together. They always ate together. They all worked out together. They were, they were, you know, they were serious about it. You know what I mean? And not too many people mess with them, man. As far as, as far as beef wise, you know what I mean? Nah, it wasn't too many. You know what I'm mean? saying? You, you know, you might take a chance and meet Bruce Lee Jr. They would fuck you up. <laughs> nah, but I'm just saying, you know, the Asian gangs, um, um, Tony Queens, they stuck together, man. I'm telling you. 
flying dragons, the ghost shadows, they, there was none of that shit. They all stuck together. They all ate together. They all rode together. They all hung out together. They all were together, man. That's a fact. 100%. Salute to, you know, to salute to all my Asian homies out there. Okay, here we go. Let me tell my... Oh, Corleone from Harlem. Okay, Corleone from Harlem wanted to know a little bit about how I felt about this Jim Jones possibly being a rat situation, okay? I don't know. You know what I mean? I, you know, I can't tell you he is. I can't tell you he's not. But as I told you with confidential informants, they do not have to be outed in court. Their testimony can be put in as confidential informant number XYC2, and you will never know who that person is, right? You'll never know who that is. They'll never have to be identified. They never have to take the stand to be like, it was him. That's just not what real confidential informants, federal government confidential informants are about. So I can't say if he's a rat or not. But when I put stuff together, this is what I put together, right? They have video. They have phone conversation that we've all heard with the Takashi situation, right? They have videos and uh, phone conversation that was tapped. Hear me now. Understand what I'm about to say. The phone call was tapped from Jim Jones and Mel Murder, right? Mel Murder, who went to jail. He's in prison for, I think, 15 years now for this whole thing, okay? And Jim Jones was talking about Takashi, and they said what they were going to do to Takashi. They said, Jim Jones said, Takashi must be super violated. Now, let's, let's peep this now. All the federal government would have to do is put Takashi on the stand because he's not done testifying. I know you guys think he is. No. He's on, he's in their pocket forever now. All Takashi had to do is get up on the stand, right? And say, and the federal government asked Takashi, hey, Mr. Hernandez, what does super violated mean? And all he'd have to say in front of a jury who don't know any better is say, that means that they're going to kill me. So super violate means kill? Yes. So now, if the federal government really wanted to, they could snatch up Jim Jones, arrest him for conspiracy to commit murder. Oh yeah. Why? Because he said Takashi needs to be super violated. Not even violated. Super violated. So again, they put Takashi on the stand. With, in this kind of case, hey, Mr. Mr. Hanat, what does it mean? It means that they wanted to kill me. Done deal. Jim Jones is going away for the rest of his life for conspiracy to commit. He didn't even commit the murder. S conspiracy to commit murder. Now, you don't think the federal government can do this? Corleone? You don't think the federal government can do that? Of course they could. Why aren't they? I ask you that question. Why wouldn't they snatch him up? Hmm. Especially after Takashi identified him as a gang member. But we knew that already. He's been throwing that shit up for forever. I tell you guys, you better be careful what you do on this internet, man. It could come back and haunt you. And I feel it may still come back and haunt that guy. Unfortunately. You know, he's been throwing it up for years, man. The government knew that already. But now they have somebody cooperating. Yes, he's a gang member. Oof. So you're telling me the government couldn't put, grab and snatch him up? For conspiracy to commit murder? So the ball is in your court, Corleone. Why wouldn't they snatch him up? Is he more valuable in the streets? I don't know if he's a snitch. I'm just giving you the I'm just giving you the facts of what's what's known. It's, these are the facts of the case. These are the facts that's been out there, right? So I don't know. I'm not gonna say whether he is or not, you know what I mean? I'm just, you know. If I knew him, I wouldn't be calling his line. I tell you that, you know. I'm mean, just gonna leave it like that. So, Corleone from Harlem, you know, you put it together any way you want. You know what I mean? And you know, and I, I appreciate the love, and I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the question. But you gotta realize that a lot of dudes is out here, man, undercovers, man. Under, I, you know, I always talk about this. I always talk about this to you kids, man. You got to be careful of what the fuck you doing. You see, you see that in that also in that Takashi case, right? The kid CEO Chris, five star general, ooh, big dog, getting all the work in the world, getting all the work for you, you know, the layman terms, all the drugs in the world, right? 
had all the drugs in the world, and he was supplying the non trade gangsters all over New York City. He was the number one dog. Little did they know he's been an informant since May of 2017. He was an informant way before they even got arrested. A year before they got arrested, he was working with the government because he got caught. Went in there, decided to work with them. So what did they do? They put him back on the streets. This is stuff I talked about videos ago before this shit even happened. And he was out here working and he was working for the government. When they decided they didn't need him anymore, snatched his ass up and now they're going to use him as an, you know, now that they used him on the stand like Takashi, he's going to get the same thing Takashi did, you know, a year, two years and be home. The rest of them dudes all got 15, 20, some of them dudes got 40 years. You got to be careful, people. To you younger generation, man, stop thinking people are loyal to you, man. Stop thinking these people don't exist. It's a fact. It's out there. It's public knowledge. This shit exists, man. Because when you're sitting up in the mountains, man, and, and, and that door closes on your ass, you, you know, and if you watch these videos, you're going to remember this shit. You're going to remember. Fred told me this. Oh, yeah, they're out there. The game is fucked up now, man. It doesn't even make sense to get involved in that shit. Don't make sense to try to get no money. Doesn't make, it makes zero sense. Because these rats is out here, man. It's a fact. And then you're going up north and now you're fighting all types of wars and shit. You're fighting all types of crazy shit. We're going to take one more question. We're going to take Chrissy from Nevada. Ooh. Nevada. Shout out to Chrissy from Nevada. She wanted to know one of the, you know, some of the worst experiences I've seen. You know, I, I, I've been through myself. I've been through so much, you know. I have 11, 12 videos of, of terror and shit that I've been through. But something that maybe I haven't shared with you guys. Let me, let me tell you. So one time, so this was in Kaksaki, right? When I first got there. There was a major, it was in the winter time, okay? Snowing, freezing like a motherfucker, okay? And it was horrible outside. And it was, you know, a big riot, right? You know, you know, and we were in the smaller yard. They had a big yard and they had smaller yards. We were in the smaller yard. The big yard was open for like on the weekends and shit. The smaller yards was used during the week. So there was maybe a couple hundred, 200 people out there, whatever. A little riot happened, you know, and, you know, dude started going at it. And I think it was a Brooklyn Bronx thing. It was always a Brooklyn Bronx thing. So, a couple people got cut, and, you know, when the Turtles came out there, when the Ninja Turtles came out there, suited up, man, they started fucking everybody up, right? And then they started putting everybody on the wall, and they couldn't find the weapons. That's how it was. Weapons would somehow disappear quickly. Now, in Kagsaki, in the small yard, they used to have windows, you know, so, so a lot of times dudes would, you know, have little holes in the screen and they would put it to people it was already preordained put them through to the windows before these guys the guards could come out and then when they come out they wouldn't find shit they changed all that up now so no one's you know no, i'm not telling you on anything that wasn't known all right so when they came out and they couldn't find the razors they couldn't find them so they started stripping everybody in the yard in the freezing cold Below zero weather, snowing, horrible, disgusting weather. Slu just shit all over the floor like ice and everything. And what they made us do... <clears throat> sometimes this shit is hard to talk about, man. True story, man. But anybody who's lived this type of shit will understand, you know. And understand, like, why my voice is getting a little funny right now. Because the shit is like... It was, it was one of the most demeaning things I've been through. One of them. I've been through a lot. But they stripped us all naked, man. And they made us crawl on our hands and knees, butt ass fucking naked, man. From the yard to inside. And they made us, you know, crawl, like I said, you know, 100 yards, whatever it was, in the freezing, ice cold, butt naked, man. Like fucking dogs. And if you resisted, they fucked you up, man. If you resisted, they, 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 you know, they did damage. Because some people are like, man, I ain't doing this shit. Fuck, bam! Right in the fucking head. Beat the fuck out of them. Break a bone. 
There's nothing anyone could do about it. Back then, the shit wasn't videoed and recorded and all that bullshit. It was just that you resisted and they fucked you up. So you fell in line, man. Even the toughest gangsters, man, was crawling butt fucking naked, man, through the yard, man. Until we got back inside. And then they rounded us all up in one room, you know. But for all of us standing there butt fucking naked, man. Everybody freezing. Some people down there frostbit on their hands from crawling. Some people, you know, had to crawl, like I said, a hundred yards, man. They humiliated us. That's what they're there for. They're there to demean. They're there to break your spirit, man. So Chrissy from Nevada... That was one of the most, you know, devastating experiences that I remember. You know, and I have a lot of them, which will still come, you know, to come. Like I said, you know, I got that, you know, got some podcast thing working right now. And hopefully, you know, within the next month or so, oh yeah, we're going to be doing a trial run. Tales from the Pen. It's coming. Tales from the Pen podcast is coming. You know, when I first started doing these videos, I just wanted to, you know, to, to reach a couple people, maybe reach a couple kids. That was my only intention. I never had really intentions to grow or do anything. Never. You know, but since I started, a lot of things have been coming at me. You know, hopefully I can maybe take this to a, another level. But, you know, not for monetary reasons or none of that, just to get my message across, man. Just to get my message across to these kids, man, that the penitentiary is not a fucking game, man. Despite what people tell you. And I don't care how tough you are, man. You're going to get broke down. Even if it's not physically, mentally, emotionally, you're going to become different. You're going to become something very much different. You know, and I use this platform to express those, those kind of ideas to let you guys know that this is not a game. And I've also, since I've been doing this, a lot of, you know, a few family members, few good friends have told me, you know what? I understand you a lot better now, Fred. I understand a lot, you know, of, of who, why and who you are through this platform. So this is like, this is like, you know, this is like self-help for me too. To share my experiences. Stuff that I've never talked about in my life. Stuff that I thought would never come out. Like me having to crawl a hundred yards in it naked. You know, while getting beat with sticks. As you go down, it's like the it was like the soul train line, that's what they called it. And as you went through, you know, if you even look funny, bang, bang, you got it on both sides. Bang, bang. And if you refuse, you'd get it in the head. This is the shit I went through, but this is the shit I put myself in. This is the shit I put myself in by making negative choices. By making dumbass decisions. Because as I always say, I knew the difference between right and wrong. I just chose to ignore it. Don't ignore it. Do the right thing, kids. Stay your ass in school. Be somebody. And on that note, I'm going to say, experience is the greatest teacher. But somebody else's experience could be just as valuable if you listen. Please pay attention and listen. And on that note, Fred White signing off.